Amen. So everybody clean up for the Lord. And uh, we're going to move right ahead on here and uh, have our pastor come forth. Amen. And do what he does well. Amen. Excellent. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God, Thank God. Thank God for our pastor. Amen. Thank God for our Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody. Ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And he is worthy to be praised. If nobody else is worthy, God is worthy to be praised. And we don't have to look far for a reason to praise him, to exalt his name, to worship him. God has been good. Since the last time I saw you, I can report that the Lord has been good to me. He woke me up this morning. And he started me on my way. You know, he didn't have to wake us up. No. But he woke us up this morning. It wasn't the alarm clock. It wasn't your neighbor's car. It wasn't that stereo booming. But it was the Lord that shook your inner man and said, get up. For this is the day that the hand of the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I heard a preacher say, you've got to command your day. Yes. You've got yes. to remind yourself that this is the day yes. that he has made. Yes. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's an honor and a privilege to be in this house this morning. We could be a lot of places. Uh, we could have woke up in the hospital. Could have woke up in prison. We could have woke up anywhere. In a strange bed, I've woken up. I've, I've, I've woke up in some strange places and in some obscene conditions. How in the world did I get here? But thank God I woke up in my own bed, in my right mind, with life, health, and strength. I heard the sister say uh, uh, she woke up and she was clothed, had some clothes on her new to put them on. And in the right mind. You know, having your right mind is a blessing. In this day and time, just to be able to, to, to think sober thoughts, thoughts that make sense, just to be able to put two and two together and say four, just to be able to say yes what you need to say yes to and know what you need to say no to, it's a blessing. Yes, yes, yes. So many people who are degreed and professional and, and have everything going for them but don't have two cents in the head. It's a blessing. Oh, yes, it is. And I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for it. And, and I'm especially thankful because I've done some things where it shouldn't be in my right mind. I've made some decisions that were contrary to the will and to the way of God and it it, it should have caused me yes, yes. not to be where I am. But had it not been for the Lord that was on my side. Oh, bless his name. Even when I wasn't on his side, he was on my side. Even when I wasn't in his way, he was in my way. And I'm thankful. Thank you, Jesus. I said I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. Oh, that he looks out for me. And you know what? He look out for you too. Whether you want to admit it or not, he look out for you. Oh, yes, he does. Because if he didn't, you wouldn't be here this morning. Oh, bless his name. But he roused your spirit. He aroused your inner man and, and directed your steps to the house of God. So that you could gather with the saints. And receive some strength. Mm -hmm. And receive a word from the Lord. Yeah. To get you over the hump. Yeah. Until the next time. Oh, yeah. Somebody tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. 
And I echo the sentiments of my wife, everything she said. I say, yay and amen. Yeah. Thank God for everyone in your place, to the deacon brothers, to the ministers, to yeah. all of the officials of the church, the visitors, saints, and friends. Uh, we just thank God for being here. Thank you, Deacon Lundy, for backing up your word. Yeah. I think it was way back in August. Uh, he said that he was working on a website. He wants to take the church uh, live and into the 21st century and active. Now, I'm not a social media person. I think I had a Facebook account uh, maybe three or four years ago. I shut it down way back then. Deactivate. It just wasn't my thing. I don't have Facebook, in Instagram. I love technology, but it just ain't my thing. That's my wife thing. But uh, just because you don't like it don't mean it's not relevant. You know, um, it's neat as just the way things are in times like these. And uh, God is using social media and the Internet. Where do you think that technology come from? It don't come from Bill Gates and the founder of uh, Facebook. It don't come from them. It comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of Light, in whom is no shadow of turning. Yeah. All music come from God. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That thing that make you bump and make you move, it come from God. Now the enemy will come in and try to alter it and alter it to suit his purposes. But every good thing comes down from heaven. Somebody need to say thank you, Jesus, for every good and perfect gift. Oh, glory to his name. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is in the room this morning. Yeah. Whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, I said the Holy Ghost is in the room and you can have whatever you want. Yeah, yeah whatever you need. Yeah. If you stand in the need of healing, you can get it. Yeah. If you stand in need of deliverance, you can have it. Yeah. If you stand in need of a breakthrough, you can have it. Because yeah. he's here right now. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. Just tell him what you want. Yeah. Call him up. The old song used to say, call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, bless his name. Is there a witness? Yeah. And if you tell him, yeah. if you ask him, He'll do it. We serve a prayer answering God. He's not a God that has uh, legs and can't walk, Amen. eyes and can't see, and arms and can't move. But he is a God who is active. Oh, God. He's full of power. He is full of anointing and full of wisdom. Glory to his name. Matthew chapter 4. And I just want to read three verses. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. And it reads, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And I'm going to stop reading here. When Jesus finally made his advent, Amen. it was glorious. When he finally made his advent, it was glorious. Matthew chapter 3 tells us that John was baptizing in the river Jordan. Jordan is the crossing over place. Jordan is the place that once you cross over, wonderful things are going to happen. Jordan is the introduction to greatness. Jordan is the place where you go down and come back up different. 
Georgia is the place that once you cross over, you'll never, ever, ever be the same. And the, uh, John the Baptist was there at the Jordan baptizing disciples. And the Bible tells us that then cometh Jesus from Galilee to this crossing over place. And when John saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You know what? I'm glad that there's somebody that has an answer to my sin. I thank him that there's somebody, when I spent all I had, when I worked all I can work, and it all came to nothing, I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for the one that, uh, behold, the Lamb of God that take away my sin. And not just my sin, but your sin. Jesus is the one that has power to answer the sin question. And the power that he has is in his blood. Oh, thank him for the blood right now. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus came down to Jordan to be baptized by John. And when John saw him and knew who he was, he said, no, no, no. I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus said, no, you baptize me. Suffer it so to be. Because I have to fulfill all righteousness. I've got to do things that are right. Yeah, yeah. If we're going to do anything, let's do it right. Yeah. Let's not half. My father didn't like half done stuff. Yeah. I was raised in a home where if it wasn't done right, I had to do it over again. Yeah. I had to wind up doing a lot of chores over again yeah. because I half did it. If we're going to do anything, whether it is personally or whether we do something for God, let's do it right. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. If I'm going to do this thing, if I'm going to be the savior of the world, it has to be done right. And a part of it being right, I've got to go down in the water so I can come back up again. Aren't you thankful for the example that he set? And so the Bible tells us that when Jesus went down and came back up again, several things happened. First of all, uh, the heavens were open. And he saw, thank you, uh, Dr. Adams, he saw, he saw the Holy Ghost come down. This is what we need in our church if we're going to do things right. Yes. For the heavens to open yes. and for the Holy Ghost to come down. Yes. How many of you know you need the Holy Ghost? Yes. The Holy Ghost is the agent that set things in order. Yes. The Holy Ghost is the power that set things right. Yes. You need the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ghost. Yes. The Holy Ghost came down in the form of a dove and lighted upon him and then something else happened there was a voice that thundered from heaven yes. that this is my beloved son yes. in whom I am well pleased yes. for those of you who might be looking for affirmation for those of you who want somebody to push you and pump you and prime you and let you know that he's in your corner I want you to know that God himself yeah. sent me here to tell you that he is well pleased oh. with you. Oh, yeah. It don't matter where you are in life. He sent you here this morning to know it's all right. I'm well pleased oh, yeah. with you. See, God calls those things that be not as though they are. That's why you can live like a hellion and God can look at you and say, I'm well pleased. Maybe not where you are, but where I'm going to take you. Why? Because Jesus is there. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is there. And wherever Jesus and the Holy Ghost is, God is too. Somebody tell him, thank you, Lord, for being there. Oh, bless his name. So now we have Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, 
full of the Father's approval. Yeah. And in the beginning of Matthew chapter 4, the Bible tells us that this same Holy Ghost, you know, the Holy Ghost that we feel when we come to church. Yeah. The Holy Ghost that might make you cut a step every now and again. Yeah. The Holy Ghost that might make you speak in tongues. Yeah. The Holy Ghost that make you sing and yeah. make you dance and make a tear fall down your cheek. Yeah. The same Holy Ghost yeah. drove Jesus into the wilderness. Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you ever been driven to a wilderness experience? Yeah. Out there where no water is. Where it's dry, where it's hot, where it's desolate, and everything around you is poisonous. Mm. The same Holy Ghost drove him. See, what the Holy Ghost will do from time to time is drive you to a place where he can mold you. Drive you to a place where he can shape you. Drive you to a place where he can make you after his will. And can't nothing make you and mold you and shape you like a wilderness experience. Oh, God, I wish I had a witness in the house. Can't nothing make you, mold you, shake you, break you like being in the wilderness. And the Bible says that during this wilderness experience, uh, he, was, he was driven there to be tempted and to be tested by the devil. The Holy Ghost took him to the wilderness. The Holy Ghost turned him over to the powers of darkness. And you think you're in the wrong place. No, 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 you're in the right place. If you're under the sound of my voice, no matter where you are in life, you're in the right place. God has everything under control. And you're in his hand. And can't nobody snatch you out of his hand. Oh, bless his high name. The Bible says that he was tested in three areas, but I just want to concentrate on one of the areas that he was tested in. Um, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verse number 5, the second temptation of Jesus, that the devil took him to the holy city. And not only did he take him to the holy city, he took him to church. Not just any church, the church. He took him to the temple in Jerusalem. And this kind of blew my mind now. It played with my mind. The Holy Ghost took him to the wilderness, to the devil. But the devil took him to church. Let me back up and say, um, the devil took him into the holy city. Jesus submitted himself in order to be an effective savior. He humbled himself. Yeah. Paul told the Philippians uh, in Philippians chapter 2, uh, he made himself of no reputation. This is what Jesus did. And he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself Amen. and became obedient unto death. In order for Jesus to effectively humble himself uh, and be like we are, that means he had to humble himself to the devil too. Yeah. Yes. And so the devil took him. Jesus allowed the devil to take him somewhere. Uh -huh. Now, if Jesus is not taking you anywhere... If he is not directing your journey, then the devil is. Mm. Mm. Let me say that again. Jesus, if Jesus is taking us somewhere, ultimately to eternity. But if Jesus is not in charge of your journey, then the devil is. There is no other choice. There is no great matter. You either serving God or you're serving the devil. Even if you're serving them in a good way, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Either God, then be for God. If you ain't for God, you're going to be for the devil. It's automatic. And so the Bible tells us that Jesus allowed himself to be taken by the devil. You know the devil specializes in taking you places. Oh yeah. 
And he'll take you some good places too. Mm. The devil took Jesus to church. The Holy Ghost led me to church this morning. Okay, that's fine. But the devil can take you to church too. If he took Jesus, he can take you too. And the devil taketh him up into the holy city, a bold rascal. Yes, he is. The devil bold now. He took him to the holy city. That's Jesus' specialty. Took him to the holy city. And not only to the holy city, he took him to church. I'm trying to leave this alone here. But I just keep going back to it. He took him to church. Come on, let's go to church. Out of all the places he could have took him. He could have took him to the movies. He could have took him to see a triple X movie. He could have took him to a banquet. Could have took him to a concert. He could have took him to Walmart. He could have took him to the bank. He could have took him anywhere. But out of all the places, could have took him to the after hours spot. Could have took him to the liquor store. Could have took him to the dope dealer. But he said, no, let's go to church. And not only when he did he take him to church, but when he got to church, he took him to a high place right. in the church. He set him up on a pinnacle, on the spire of the temple. Now, some theologians say that uh, the, the original temple, Solomon's temple, was 10 to 20 stories tall. Yeah. And then the temple was destroyed, it was rebuilt somewhere between 10 stories tall and 20 stories tall. That's how high the temple, uh, uh, some theologians say that it was. And the Bible says that when the devil got him to church, he set him in a high place. Let's go sit on the pulpit. Let's go to a high place. Let's go sit on the deacon's board. Let's go to a high place. He took him as high. The devil will take you as high as you can go. Don't tell me he can't promote. He will promote. Yes, yes, and he'll promote in the church. Yes, Y'all with me this morning? Yes. Yes. But the thing about God promoting, you see, when God puts you up, can't nobody take you down. But when the devil puts you up, look at what he said. Once he got him up there, once he got him way up top, then he said, cast yourself down. The devil's promotions are never permanent. His relationship, there's a lot of ways that he can take you up. He can take you up in your money. He can take you up in your honey. He can give you the man, supposedly, the man of your dreams, the woman of your dreams, but you keep on fooling with the devil and they'll become a nightmare. The dream will turn into a nightmare. If you keep fooling with the devil, he took him up high. But his intent is never to leave you there. He said, he said, he said, now, 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 if thou be who you really say you are, I've got you in this high place. If you're so big and bad, cast yourself down. Throw yourself off. See, now. If the devil really wanted him destroyed, he could have took him and threw him off himself. But the devil don't have control of your life. He wants to kill, to steal, and destroy, and he would, but guess who stepped in? Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But the devil told God, told, told Jesus, throw yourself off. Throw yourself off. Throw yourself off. Keep playing with God. Throw yourself off. Keep sinning against him willingly. Throw yourself off. Keep playing with his grace. Throw yourself off. Keep playing with his loving kindness. Throw yourself down. Y'all with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, keep fooling around with him. Throw yourself off. He said, if you be the son of God, 
and carry all of his favor. Carry up. You know you God boy. You know he'll, he'll forgive you again. You know you and God are like that. Throw yourself down. You know you anointed, appointed, and approved. Look at the place you're in. You're in a high place. Throw yourself down. The Lord sent me here to tell you this morning, stop playing with him. Don't you listen to the devil. The devil can't make you do nothing, but he'll suggest over and over and over again in your head for you to cast yourself down. Uh, and then he'll quote the word. He said, he, he said, uh, it is written. Jesus didn't say this, the devil said this, and it was true. It is written that if you cast yourself down, he'll give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, Psalms 91, that's one of my favorite songs. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time. You dash your foot against the stone. See, that's what the devil specializes in. He specializes in quoting the word to you. He started it in the Garden of Eden. He quoted the word with a little twist. And he's still doing it today because it's an effective tactic. Cast yourself down. God got your back. He'll send Michael. He'll send Gabriel. Uh, he'll send Raphael. And before you hit the ground, they'll sweep you up. God said, don't you take that chance. You've already been taking too many chances. And Jesus, Jesus, I'm through. Jesus said unto him, it is written. It is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Stop tempting him. Jesus knew enough about his father. Now this is Jesus saying this. He knew enough about his father. He had been with them long enough. Back before there was a when and a where. A here and a there. Back before there was a Milky Way. Back before there was the nine planets. And the countless untold galaxies. Back before there was a Michael and a Gabriel. When it was only the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus knew enough about his Father. Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man. Jesus knew enough about his Daddy not to push the wrong button. Even Jesus himself knew, all right, Satan, thou shalt not tell. I'm his son, and I know better, better uh, not to tempt him the way you're asking me to tempt him. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And you human, uh, you humans here this morning, God sent me here to tell you, thou shalt not tempt. Stop tempting him. Stop tempting him. Because you don't know when your time is going to run out. Stop tempting him. Stop playing with him. Oh, I can't preach it like I really want to. Uh, but stop tempting him. You're playing with fire. You don't know when his mercy going to run out. You're playing with fire. You don't know when he going to allow the fire to burn you or not. You're playing with it. Stop tempting him. Thou shalt not tempt. <laughs> The Lord thy God. He's the God of the universe. Yeah, yeah. And our life and our times and our seasons are in his hands. Thou shalt not tempt. How many times he got to save your life? Thou shalt not tempt. How many times he got to rescue you from a bad situation? Thou shalt not tempt. The Lord thy God. How many times he got to step in and save your life? What, again? God said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't jump off this ledge no more. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't swallow 
a bottle full of pills no more. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. He might not rescue me this time. I can't jump off the roof and hope I land on a garage or in a tree this time. I might miss. Stop tempting him. Stop tempting him. Stop tempting him. He's got a purpose for you. He's got a plan for you. He wants you to come on in. Thou shalt not tempt. The reason why Jesus went through this temptation. The reason why he humbled himself and allowed himself to be tested, not just this temptation, but in two other areas, uh, so that he could so that he could set the example not for him, but for us yeah. who would come after him. Yeah. To know that no matter how high the devil take you, even if you do jump off, Jesus said, I want you to see how to get out. That was the purpose of Jesus going through this. That was the purpose of Jesus allowing himself to be led of the devil so that he could set the example that no matter how high you have gone up and no, uh, uh, how low you have fallen, uh, that there is still a way out. And the way out uh, is not to tempt God no more. You use that word. You use the logos. You use the almighty word of God. And you start quoting that word. Lord, it's written in your word. That if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe that God has raised him from the dead. You said, I shall be saved. Stop using the logos. I don't care how low you are. Use the word of God. Yeah. And then when he snatched you up out of darkness and into his marvelous light, God said, tell him, thou shalt not tempt. Don't tempt. You ain't strong enough to tempt. You ain't got enough knowledge to tempt God. You ain't got enough finesse to tempt him. You're not eternal. You're living in the realm of time. But he's eternal and everlasting. He is the God, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. You ain't got enough gumption. You ain't got enough education. You ain't got enough flair. You ain't got enough flow. Thou shalt not tell. Oh. Glory to God. Come on, begin to praise him in this house. Come on, begin to praise him in this house. particular time in the temple in Jerusalem, there wasn't nothing going on now. Mm -hmm. People were going to church. You had your high priest, you had your priests, you had your Levites, uh, you had your membership, but it wasn't no power in the church. Uh -huh. you, you had people coming in sick and infirmed and was leaving sick and infirmed. You had demoniacs acting out, interrupting the church service. It wasn't until Jesus whipped the devil on his own territory after he called his disciples together. He said, let's go to church. And he began preaching and casting out devils during Sunday morning service and healing the sick. And those who were in the church were like, wait a minute, you can't do that on a Sunday morning. And that's why the devil took him because there wasn't nothing going on. But when Jesus come in the house, yeah. when the Holy Ghost come in the room, yeah. glory to God, yeah. things will
will change. And so, beloved, this morning, I leave you with this word. I leave you with this word. If you're in a wilderness experience, it's all right. It's been ordered by God. Let him test you. Let him tempt you. Let him mold you. Let him make you. Let him break you. Let him shape you. And let him endue you with power from on high. And Lord, have mercy. Whatever you do, stop tempting him. If you're going to live for him, live for him. Yeah. If you're going to roll with them, roll with them. Yeah. I ain't saying you're going to be perfect, but, but make your calling and your, effect, your election sure. Yeah. Set your affections on things above yeah. and not on things on the earth below. And I'm telling you, God will help you. If he helped me, he'll help you too. Yeah. Do you want him to help you this morning? Yeah. Everyone stand and every eye is closed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you right now. Thank you that you know us better than you know ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We thank you for the word of God. Yes, God. That is quick and powerful. Thank you, God. Sharper than any two inch Piercing even to the dividing of thunder. Thank you. Of soul and spirit. Hallelujah. Chunks and Mary. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone in this house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. God, we need your help. We want to live for you. But we don't want to play with you no more. Grant us the power. Grant us the mindset. To live for you and not to tempt you in Jesus' strong name. While every head is bowed, is there one that would say, Brother Wilson, pray for me. I'm out of fellowship with God and I need to be saved. I need to give my life over to Jesus Christ. Are you here? Anyone standing in the need of prayer?